Thanks, Mr. Speaker. I move that the House record its deep sadness at the death on 7 March 2024 of Lance Corporal Jack Fitzgibbon place on record its appreciation of his service to his country and tender its profound sympathy to his family, friends and colleagues in their bereavement. Mr Speaker, I rise to pay tribute to Lance Corporal Jack Fitzgibbon. He made the ultimate sacrifice while serving his country. At his funeral service at St Joseph's Catholic Church in Cessnock on Monday, it was a sombre honour to be among those with whom Jack served and alongside his loving family and partner. Jack's family is with us here today. And I say to them, uh, we hold all of you in the embrace of our hearts. Jack's parents, Diane and Joel, the former member for Hunter, and someone very dear to us in the Labor family. Jack's partner, Cass, and Jack's sisters, Caitlin and Grace. Jack was humble, but I know that your pride in all that he was and all that he achieved was as immense as your love for him. Our hearts are also with all who served with Jack, especially the members of the 2nd Commando Regiment, who are now coming to terms with the loss of their comrade and their friend. There is nothing simple or predictable about grief, especially when a life is cut short during its prime. All the promise of all those years yet to be lived, suddenly taken away. Any sense of consolation is elusive, but perhaps some could be found amid all the expressions of the extraordinary esteem in which Jack was held. The church was overflowing there on Monday. The great town of Cessnock stopped while the service went on. No matter what the challenge, no matter what the conditions, it was clear that Jack was someone who could be counted on. As a soldier, his leadership skills had already won recognition with the promotion from private to Lance Corporal last year. During his decade of service to his nation and to the Australian Army, Jack was awarded the Australian Defence Medal, the Operational Service Badge, Military and the Operational Service Medal, Counterterrorism Special Recovery. From the day he enlisted in 2014, Jack was proudly part of something bigger than himself. He was numbered among the extraordinary men and women who volunteer to serve in the Australian Defence Force and do our nation proud every single day. This accident that took Jack away from all who loved him is a harsh reminder that there are no easy days for those who defend our nation. What they do is crucial to everything we hold dear as a nation and as a people. The choice to serve is both an act of courage and a profound expression of love for our country. We are so grateful to every Australian who serves and put themselves on the line for all of us. Our nation thanks Jack. Our nation honours Jack. He lived a full life that was cut far too short. To look at that photo of Jack in his uniform, shoulders back, eyes bright, is to grieve for all the tomorrows he has been denied, to mourn for all the moments he will never share. All that time his loved ones should have had with him and in the wonderful tributes from his dad, his mum and his sisters, we saw photos there in the church. I've got to say, um, almost every one of them he had a beer in hand. <laughs> Reminds me of another Fitzgibbon. <laughs> that I know. It was... A marvellous send-off from a family, from a defence force, from a community and from a nation that is proud 
of Jack Fitzgibbon. And I think Joel's uh, words uh, that were said in the video, <coughs> saying in spite of everything, he was so glad that Jack enlisted. There is, of course, no grief without love. Sorrow may soften with the passage of the years, but love does not. All that Jack meant and all that he was will endure always. I offer my deepest condolences to all of Jack's family. His mate and me were elected on the same day in 1996 but we've been mates a lot longer than that, since the early 1980s. So I've seen his family grow up as we in this strange profession that we're engaged with uh, see often our families as they grow, our families together. And Joel is a mate of my sons as well. So this is tough. But to all who loved him and to all who served with him, to all who've joined us here in the public gallery to honour him, may your hearts always glow with his memory. May Jack rest in peace. The call to the Honourable the Leader of the Opposition. Thank you very much, uh, Mr Speaker. Well, I commend the Prime Minister for his fine and very touching and moving words. An honourable life is forged by one's values, choices and deeds. Lance Corporal Jack Fitzgibbon loved his country. That love saw him choose to serve his country. And that choice saw him defend his country as a soldier. Because of Jack's values, choices and deeds, today we honour an honourable man who lived an honourable life. In the tragic death of Lance Corporal Jack Fitzgibbon, our nation has lost a principled personable and promising young Australian. Greater than the national loss is the profoundly personal loss. A dedicated father has lost his only son. A devoted mum has lost her only boy. A dear partner has lost her life's counterpart. And two sisters have lost their darling sibling. A band of brothers have lost one of their own. Now our hearts break for Joel, for Di, for Cass, for Caitlin and Grace, and for the soldiers of the 2nd Commando Regiment. In Jack's tragic death, we are again reminded that the military service of selfless individuals comes with risks. Risks not only on the battlefield, but in training too. In 1996, and Jack would want us to remember this today, 18 Australian families paid the price for their loved one's service when two Black Hawks collided. Last year, four Australian families paid the price for their loved one's service in the Taipan crash. And now the Fitzgibbon family is paying the price for their beloved Jack's service in the Special Forces. Jack was only 33 years old and his life was cut tragically short with that accident. But in the short life of a marvellous man, we see qualities which define our nation's longevity, patriotism, duty and courage. In our tears for Jack, we recognise the noblest traits which make our country tick. In our grief for the Fitzgibbons, we express our gratitude to those families whose stoicism in their loss speaks to a hallmark of our national character. In Jack Fitzgibbon and his family, we see and we know the very best of Australia. That is why our morning today bestows meaning for our tomorrows. On behalf of the coalition, I offer my heartfelt condolences to the Fitzgibbon family and thank them for the honour of sharing Jack's funeral service with us at St Joseph's Catholic Church in Cessnock, as the Prime Minister pointed out before. There was an emotional outpouring, particularly from Jack's mates, and I acknowledge those in uniform who are with us today and those who will be mourning the loss for a long time to come. 
They spoke so fondly and so warmly of him, the times together and the social occasions that they caught up and the larrikin nature that Jack had, which his mum and dad and sisters spoke so fondly of. I look forward very much to sharing a glass and raising a toast soon to the life of Jack and to Joel and to the family. As the Prime Minister pointed out, Joel is Labor Party royalty, but he's held very dearly in our hearts as well, a person for whom we have a great deal of respect. May Jack Fitzgibbon rest in peace. Thank you.